Bhagavad Gita verse 3.16 O Partha, in this world, one who does not follow this cycle of action as prescribed in the scriptures, delights in the senses and engages in sinful life. Thus he lives in vain. Sar Ardhavarshini By not engaging in this cycle, the fault of irregularity arises. The present verse, beginning with Evam, is spoken to give an understanding of this point. Chakra, or cycle, means an ordered series of events. For example, clouds and rain come from sacrifice, food grains come from rains, and from food grains come mankind, whom again performs sacrifice, which produces rain clouds, and so on. One who does not engage in sacrifice to continue this cycle is a sinful person, who does not go to hell, only one who performs sacrifice or yajna does not go to hell. Sar Ardhavarshini Prakashikariti Parameshwara, the Supreme Lord, has established the cycle of karma to fulfill the desires of the jivas. Consequently, one who does not perform sacrifice, which perpetuates the cycle of the universe, becomes implicated in sin and goes to hell. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, O Partha, they who are qualified to engage in action with a desire for the fruits, Kamya Karma, but who do not perform sacrifice to perpetuate the cycle of the universe, become servants of their senses and engage in sinful life. Thus they live in vain. The significance is that in Nishkama Karma Yoga, selfless action which is offered to Sri Bhagavan, sin or piety are not considered. Scripture has thus established this as the most suitable path to attain pure transcendental bhakti to Bhagavan. A person following this path easily becomes pure at heart and free from material contamination. Those who have not acquired the qualification to offer the fruit of their selflessly performed duty to Sri Bhagavan are always swayed by material desires and sensual urges. They thus engage in sinful acts. The only way to reduce this sinful tendency is to perform pious acts. Those who have acted sinfully should take shelter of the process of atonement. The performance of sacrifice is certainly religious or pious activity. That which is auspicious for all living entities, jivas, and conductive for the harmonious development of the cycle of the universe is called punya, or pious deeds. The performance of pious deeds destroys the unavoidable sins that are born of pancha suna, the five places where a householder unavoidably kills animals, the fireplace, the slab for grinding condiments, the broom, pestle and mortar, and water pot. As long as the performer of yajna protects the interests and welfare of the universe, whatever can be accepted for his happiness and personal maintenance becomes part of the sacrifice and is counted as piety. The unseen controllers, who cause auspiciousness for the universe, are the specific demigods born from the progeny, Shakti, of Sri Bhagavan. By satisfying them with the offerings they desire and gaining their favor, one receives their grace and becomes pleased. Thus, all of one's sins are destroyed. This is called the Karma Chakra, the cycle of action. Therefore, what is accepted as karma in the form of worship of these demigods 
is called Bhagavat Arpita Kamya Karma. Whoever performs these acts thinking that they are in accordance with the materialistic regulations are simply moralists. They are among those who do not offer their actions to Sri Vishnu. For Jivas who have the proper eligibility, it is auspicious to offer all actions to Bhagavan Vishnu.